I struggled during my UX bootcamp because I didn't know how to use Figma efficiently. And so it took forever for me to make designs using Figma. But since finishing my bootcamp, I've learned a lot of different keyboard shortcuts and tricks to help boost my speed when using Figma. And so here are 20 tricks, some of them more beginner, some of them more intermediate to advanced, but these have helped me to boost my speed by a lot when using Figma. So by default, Figma has a pretty light color scheme, which gives me a lot of eye strain if I'm working for a long time. So number one is to change the theme to dark mode, which you can do by going to the Figma icon, going to preferences, going to theme, and then going to the dark. And then if you want the canvas background to also be reflected in dark mode, you would change the background color to 1E, 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 and then that will have the background now uh, dark mode as well. Number two is a little basic, but it's about navigating faster. So if you don't know, if you hold down space and click and drag, you can kind of move around the canvas. If you hold down control or command on Mac and then scroll a scroll wheel on your mouse, you can zoom in and out. If you hold down shift and then scroll up and down, you can go left and right. Number three is also basic, but as someone who's used to doing copy and paste, which is a two-step process, you can really just do control D or Command-D on Mac, and that duplicates something which turns a two-step process into a one-step process. So you can highlight a, a set of buttons, hit Control-D, and you now have a duplicate set of buttons. Number four is just useful for keeping things organized. So if we look at the duplicate buttons that we made, they're all kind of spaced out from each other. So if you wanna keep them organized, you can just click and drag up and release, and they're all grouped together now. Number five is batch renaming a set of items. So I changed the color of these buttons to make it a little bit easier to follow along. But if you look, they're all labeled as primary and I want these buttons to be secondary. So what I can do is hit Control R or Command R on Mac and I can match the name, so primary, and I can change it to secondary. And now all of the secondary buttons are appropriately labeled. Number six, so these buttons are all auto layouts and it's often a pain in the ass to select elements inside of an auto layout because you have to double click to get into the auto layout to nest down. But one way you can easily select something within an auto layout is you can hit control or command click on a Mac and you can just select any element you want in an auto layout. And then if you want to select multiple, you can hold down control shift click or command shift click on Mac to select multiple elements within a um, auto layout. Number seven, let's say I wanna change the text color of all of these buttons and I want an even easier way than doing the control shift click for each of the buttons. What I can do is if these are in an auto layout, I can just highlight all of the buttons. I can press enter, which nests down and selects the text layer of each of the auto layouts and now I can change the color of each of those, which saves a ton of time. Number eight, my layers panel is now a mess with everything being expanded. So one way I can quickly organize this is just click the topmost layer and then hit Alt L on Windows or Option L on Mac and everything will collapse into the topmost layer. Number nine, I want to drag a duplicate set of these buttons down, but I want them to maintain the same X coordinates here. So if I highlight all of these buttons, I can hold down Alt and Shift or Option Shift on Mac and I can drag them down and they keep the same X coordinates. Number 10, if you hold down Shift I, you'll open the resources panel so that you can quickly get to your plugins and components such as if I needed to grab an icon for a button or something like that. Number 11, let's say I've added an icon to a couple buttons, but I've now realized that on my secondary button, I actually want the icon to be on the right side of the button. A quick way to do this is to double click on the icon to select it and then hold shift right arrow and it easily just moves it to the right side of the button. Number 12, I, for whatever reason, want to resize this frame so that it's just encompassing these buttons. Well, if I try to resize the frame, the buttons just move with it. And that's because if you look at the buttons, they have these constraints on. So if you want to resize the frame and ignore the constraints, you can hold down Control or Command on Mac and then click and drag and it ignores the constraints so that you can resize this 
however you want. Number 13, if you want an even quicker way to resize this frame so that it's just encompassing these buttons, you can just click the frame and then click on this resize to fit button here and it resizes the frame to fit. Number 14 is using a four point grid when it comes to spacing and padding within elements. So if you're just trying to eyeball what kind of distance you want from button to button, it just, there's too much variation to try to decide and it would lead to a lot of incon inconsistency. So basically the four point rule would say, hey, whatever distance between these buttons, it needs to be divisible by four. So since this is 23, that's not divisible by four. So I'm gonna use 24, which is, but let's say that's too far of a distance in between the buttons. I would move it down to 20 because that would be the next multiple down in the four point rule. And so that is applicable to space in between buttons as well as the padding within buttons. You can see here the margin in between the elements of the button are uh, four pixels, the horizontal padding is 16 pixels, and the top padding is four pixels. And so by constraining everything to multiples of four, it just limits the amount of possibilities you can have, which makes designing just a little bit more streamlined. Number 15 relates to nudging. So if you click on an element, and hit any of the directional keys, you will move that button by one pixel. And then if you hold shift and then move it in any direction, it'll move it by default 10 pixels. But let's say we wanna follow the four point grid. One way that we can make this large nudge amount a little more useful to us is we can go to this Figma button here, go down to preferences, go to nudge amount, and we can change this to eight so that now if we do shift in one of the directional buttons, it'll shift it by eight. So it's still changing it by a large amount, but it's staying within that four point grid since eight is obviously a multiple of four and 10 is not. Number 16, I often use layout grids when I design just to space things out easier, um, but I'll turn them off when I wanna just see how the overall design looks. So there's a keyboard shortcut to turn on and off layout grids. So if you hit control shift, Four, it turns on the layout grids and you hit the same thing to turn it off. Kind of a weird keyboard shortcut. I'm sure you could probably remap that, but that's what it is by default. Number 17, let's say that I want to create a color palette using this color as a base color. So I can use a plugin called Color Designer. And so if you download that and then run it, you can generate tints, which are hues lighter than the base color, or you can get shades, which are hues darker than the base color. And so if you wanted to use these, you can just copy them, uh, copy all the colors, and then you can paste it wherever you want. And so that way, if you duplicate one of these, and let's say I want it to make it lighter, uh, I could copy, let's say this one here, and I can change that fill to this, and then boom, I now have a different tint of the base color. Number 18 is for if I wanna easily create a typography scale. So let's say that I know that I want my P1 to be a 16, and I'm not sure what I want my headings to be. So an easy way to figure out what font sizes these should be is to go to typescale.com, and what it will do is automatically generate a type scale for you. And so you can change the scale, which is um, basically what multiplier it uses to give you a each different font, um, but I'll just use this one for now. So for example, my H4 might be this 20 here, since that's the first one up since 16. So I would just go to H4 and do 20. And then for H3, it would be the next one up, 25. And then for anything that has like a decimal, you can just round that to the nearest whole number. And so that's an easy way to create a typography scale. And then use you can use the same thing for going in the smaller font size direction. Number 19, I have a set of crudely drawn profiles here, and I want each of these circles to have a profile image. A very easy way to do this fast is to hit Control Shift or Command Shift on Mac, and then click each of the circles here. And then you'll need the plugin Unsplash. So you'll run Unsplash, 
And then once that loads up, all you have to do while those circles are selected, just click on portrait and bam, you just instantly have portraits loaded up. Um, and it's, I love this feature. <laughs> Number 20 is the advantage of using components. So let's say that I have a list, a long list of buttons here and I realize that, you know what, maybe for these secondary buttons, I actually wanna keep the icon on the left. Well, now that's gonna be a pain in the ass to have to do this for each and every single one of them. So this is where components come in handy. So I'm actually just gonna delete all of these and then I'm gonna move these up a little bit and then I'm gonna go up to here, click the down arrow and then create a component set. And so I can label this as, uh, I'm gonna label this actually as button three because I think I have another component called button. And so you can see here, I have a component with a two different types of buttons. I'm gonna change this property just to state here. And this basically just means that um, I have the primary and the secondary state. So now if I go to my assets and I search, I can hit button and I can drag that in and then I'll just kind of duplicate this down a bit. And now that this is an asset of a button, I can now highlight all of these and be like, well, maybe I actually want them to be uh, secondary. Or I wanna be like, eh, like I said before, I want this icon to actually be on the left. I can just change that up here. And now every instance of that is now changed. And that's really the power for me when it comes to using components. So yeah, hopefully some of these tips help you out when it comes to designing faster in Figma. I actually learned a lot of these tips from a course I recently took from Mitsuko, who is a UX design YouTuber. He has a course called the Figma Masterclass. And it is a really good course that I learned just a tremendous amount of information from. So if you wanna know more about that, I actually have a video here and uh, it just sort of covers my review about the Figma Masterclass. So be sure to check that out. And until next time, I will see you in the next video. Take care.